Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. This is Carmen with Elemental Designs. Today we're going to be working on the second part of um, this project, which is the DIY that I started <clears throat> yesterday. Um, and I have shared with you guys part one of how to assemble um, pretty much the basic structure of the little embellishment suitcase. Now this is not my idea. I did not create this idea. Um, pretty much I was inspired by other ones that I have seen here on YouTube from some of our other amazing crafters. So make sure that you go and you check them out and you show them much love and support as well. Um, all you have to do is pretty much search, you know, the paper suitcase or embellishment suitcase or something of, around that nature um, and you'll pretty much find a few. So Today we're going to be um, working on the closure. Um, I have here another piece of 12 by 12 chipboard. Um, I buy these by the pack and I buy these, sorry about that, um, as I was saying, so I buy these by the pack, I buy these on eBay. Um, these are 12 by 12 chipboards. Um, I think the point twenty two in thickness, okay? Um, I don't think I mentioned that before, so I just throw that out there real quick. Um, so we're going to be working on the closures. Um, yesterday I assembled the whole thing and um, I lined it and you know added all my decorative papers and such um, and pretty much you know started to work on the aesthetic that I kind of wanted um, the rest of this is completely optional it is totally up to you um, what I'm doing today is just pretty much sharing with you guys uh, my process of how I go through um, how I went through making the first one now they're not exactly the same um, on the first one I did a lot of um, stenciling and a lot of mixed media work I'll probably do some mixed media work on this one as well but we'll see um, we'll see kind of where it goes because I still don't know all the way through and through um, how I want it to finally look so without further ado let's get into the project so I have here like I said a 12 by 12 and I'm gonna be cutting some strips now from my scraps um, that I had left over I found this one right here and it was actually the perfect um, the perfect width and I think it's give or take an inch or three quarters of an inch if I can find my ruler. Um, I will let you guys know. So here's about three quarters of an inch um, in width. Okay. Um, but you can definitely make them thicker. I made the other ones thicker as well. So I'm going to cut um, some strips. I'm going to cut some strips here. And um, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. And when I come back um, with my three, um, my, you know, I'm not going to make three. I'm going to make a whole bunch of them. <laughs> I'm going to see, like, maybe between six of them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be cutting out six strips of about three quarters of an inch by 12. Okay, you guys? So I'm going to go ahead and get this done because this is going to be a long process. And I'll be back with you guys as soon as I am done. Okay, you guys. So we cut our strips. And I cut about six of them. They were a little bit... Um, uh, the original size was actually a little bit bigger than three quarters of an inch, but give or take is just about right. It's about one eighth off. Um, so that's fine though. With trimmers, it's really, really hard to, um, you know, sometimes get the right measurement. Sometimes they don't cut all the way through the way that you need them to. So, but that's fine. Um, so what I'm thinking, um, not sure, but I wanted to do this a little bit different. And I wanted to create like several. Um, I wanted to appear like it has several, um, like several buckles, even though it doesn't really. So, really, the two main closures are gonna be in the front. But I wanted to give the illusion like you have to kind of like unclip it from a whole bunch of different places. So, I cut myself six. I might need to cut myself a couple more. And I'm gonna see if I can use this is uh the rest of the scrap that I had yesterday um, from the paper that I used uh, to line the inside of the suitcase. So I'm gonna see if I have enough uh, to use that to kind of create my buckles with. If not, I'm gonna have to go find, go hunting for some paper. But <laughs> let's get this part of it done. Um, so I'm thinking something like that. So I'm gonna fold this here, and then I'm gonna fold it right where that bend is. And keep it lined up so that it's straight. And I'm just gonna press on that. And from that, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I'm gonna score it in the same
So let's go ahead and um, get these pieces on there so that we can glue them together so that we can go ahead and decorate them however it is that we're going to be decorating these. Let's flip this over and just kind of see where those two things meet and let's pull that down. And obviously be careful when you're um, adding glue. You can also add double-sided tape to this if you want to. That's fine as well. I'm going to add more glue than I needed, but that's fine. I can work that away. And we are going to be covering these, so don't worry too much about that. And I'll slide this off and then just make sure that it's secure and that it's leveled. And you have here the beginning of um, what's going to become your little belts on the sides of your suitcase. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other ones. We're just pretty much going to feed it and overlap them and just get them kind of nice and straight and even. So it should be exactly the same. Yep. Okay. So we're going to let this dry for a little bit. And we're going to go and um, work on the front. And figure out exactly how we're going to do that. What kind of closure we're going to give this. Let me see. Where are these going to be? Let me see where these are going to be at. Yeah. Trying to see how much room do I have um, to embellish or to add, not embellish, to add another um, strap there. I like that actually. Okay. Maybe I have to, I'm gonna have to actually cut two more then. I think that's how I'm going to do that. All right, so let's go over this one now. So I'm going to grab this one. And let's go there. Let's go there. Let's go there. So there we go. And we can score this one. You don't have to really do much um, gluing. I might have to cut myself at least one additional strip. Um, let me see if I can do this. Maybe do it from one of these. <clears throat> excuse me. Maybe I can do it from one of these scraps. <laughs> I felt like my voice was going away somewhere. I'm like, where are you going? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this 
cut myself a little strip that I might need just to um, fill in whatever I'm missing on the bottom if I'm missing anything at all. I'm not sure yet. But it's better to have it than not have it. Because it really depends on where you're going to be putting your straps. Okay, so we have a, an additional piece just in case I need it. Now let's figure out what we're going to do with this paper with all of these hinges. Now, um, what I did originally was that I stenciled, um, I did some stenciling on the belt. But I think what I'm going to do with this one, instead of stenciling, I think I'm going to heat emboss it. I think that'll be easier and it'll be it'll be a lot quicker. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, get my colors together. Um, the colors I'm gonna use. Um, I think I like the red because um, there's a little bit of red here and there, but it's not a huge pop. Sorry guys, there's a lot of uh, background noise. This is why I hardly do voiceovers because this is like this all the time. Um, so I'm gonna try to get some red. Um, I think I might have red. So I'm gonna look for it. I'm going to look for a stamp um, that I like and I do have. It's actually this one that I have here by Recollections. Um, I'm very new to embossing you guys, so forgive me if I do uh, mess up, you know, during the process. I am very new to it. I'm still kind of getting the hang of, you know, all of that good stuff. Um, so I have that. I have a Versamark ink pad. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and look for a stamp that I like. Um, I have a few background stamps there that I might uh, want to use. Well, I might use this one, actually. I've been loving this stamp. Um, it's got flowers on it. I think it's really pretty, and I think it'll fit the theme nicely because it does, it does seem to have, like, um, flowers and stuff like that here and there. Um, so I think maybe I'll stamp it uh, with this. And that stamp, and I'm going to need my heat tool, which is somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Let's see if I find where that somewhere is. I found it. Okay. Let me unplug this one and plug that one. Okay, so we have the heat tool ready to go. Um, I'm going to need some paper to pour my residue powder into. So let me go ahead and do that. Um, so I found I found a nice long strip of 12 by 12. <gasps> what is the look of that? All right, so this is gonna work. All right, you guys. So I'm gonna grab my strips and I'm just gonna try to do them one by one. I might speed through this part. Even if I end up, to, to, you know, kind of talking through the whole process, I'm, I'm going to try to do this as fast as I possibly can. And um, let's get this going.
All right, you guys, so we've gone ahead and embossed um, all of our strips. Now, I know my embossing is not the greatest, you guys. Um, I wasn't striving here for perfection. I didn't even um, try to remove some of the residuals that was there. I just pretty much run my finger through it now. Whatever comes off, comes off. Um, sometimes it sticks, sometimes it doesn't, but I'm okay with um, just getting some type of impression here. As long as it's got some kind of pattern, I'm cool with it. If you want perfection, you guys, you know you gotta, you know, do the whole pat, pat, pat thing and, you know, <laughs> get it done that way. <laughs> I try to put as much uh, little effort as possible. <laughs> so, there we go. That's the result. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and um, color the rest of these things in. And then we're going to be giving them some kind of shape. I'll see what else I do to them, and then we gotta create, um, you know, the little kind of brooch thing that you know we have to pass them through. So um, I have one here somewhere. Here it is. I have one here. Um, I'm not gonna be using this, but I'm gonna be using this kind of like a prototype, if you will, so that I can go ahead and create other ones that are a little bit smaller, um, but you know, more or less giving me the same system. Um, so, what am I going to do now? Oh yes, I'm going to be coloring these in. That's what I said I was going to do. I use this thing more for cleaning my desk than I do for um, dusting the thing, you know. It does a great job at removing <laughs> all of those little things. Alright, so, um, do, 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 do. I'm going to get some inks or some sprays or something. Something that's quick and effortless. And we're going to get these things colored in. I'm going to try to see if I can find something that is as reddish as I can find it. Um, so that I can at least kind of keep that going through. Um, so let's see. It's the box. It's like, it has like little reds. Um, I can probably not want to do black. Well, let's go for this star. Um, um, this one right here, this Cockle Bell's Coral. Let's go with that for now and see um, how I like it if I gotta go darker. I don't really have red. So, let's see how it kind of looks. It's gonna give it a nice um, little shimmer. I might um, spray that with different, with different ones just to get the right color that I'm looking for. Just picking up some of this excess off of here. Let me try to spray these um, as close together as possible so that I don't waste so much material. Let's try that real quick.
think I'm going to leave them like that. Um, have all of our little belts. We can still more or less see where they're still folded, so this is why it's very good to make sure that you do, you know, really good folds on them so that they're nice and tight so that they maintain their folds after you do all those things to them. Okay, so got that. Making sure that that's dry. I'll wash that off later. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and shape the ends of this. So these are the ends. This is the other piece. So let's go ahead and round these off. I'm going to see if I can find something that will do that for me. Okay. Alright, so all I have left to do now is just kind of glue these in place and then we're going to work on what's going to be um, the closure for this. And then we're going to be done with, you know, this part of it. The rest of it is just embellishing you guys. And that part of it I'm most likely going to just um, kind of speed through and, you know, just you decorate it however you wish. These are just, um, you know, ideas for how you can do yours. So I'm just going to go ahead and place these real quick. Oh, I like that. I can probably even use a string to tie these close. Well, I might do that. See, you guys? It's always an ever, an ever evolving process. But no, yeah, well, yeah, actually, I still can. I still can. Um, I will just have to make sure that I glue this, that I glue this down really, really well. So, let me go ahead and glue the bottoms. And again, I'm trying to place this so that it is. Let's get it the position that I can possibly get it. I'm going to aim for the same kind of general area. So I did it right above um, where this part of it is. So I'm going to go ahead and glue right in there. And after I'm done with this part of it, I'm most likely going to give it a coat of gesso. Oops, my glue dried. Then I'm most likely give it a coat of gesso.
You don't have to go too crazy with the glue here. It's just to kind of, um, generally speaking, keep it in about the same place. So it doesn't start um, jostling around too much. Let's go ahead and position that one. And glue. And the reason that I'm gluing this now is because I'm going to um, have to cut. Remember, we have to kind of cut this down so that it does fit perfectly um, and we're able to open and close it. So I will have to cut right here, but I want to keep everything in the right alignment. Um, so when I do cut, everything is still exactly where I need it to be. Okay. All right, so for this, for right now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to um, glue right here in the part that sticks to this top half here. Okay, not the bottom. I don't need to worry about the bottom for right now. Um, I can glue the bottom afterwards. But I definitely want to um, glue these in place so that they stay exactly where I need them to be so that everything does line up perfectly when the box is closed. So I'm going to go ahead and apply my glue. And then I'm going to set this to the side and let this all dry before I do anything else to this box. I have to make sure that these little belts are perfectly dry. something to hold this one. Okay. And just make sure everything is straight, you know. We're going to do the same thing on this side. Okay, you guys, so I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to stop this video now. I'm going to let this kind of dry, and then we'll be back with the second part. Well, the second part is the second part. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's see. So this should be about dry. <laughs> All right, so about dry, <laughs> like I said. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add these in here because this is part of what we're going to use to close it um, and we're going to glue this to the back so I'm going to just glue on that tab actually I'm going to glue on both parts I'm going to glue on both parts here Right here. And I don't I don't think I'm gonna be feeding this through, you know, the bottom. I think I'm gonna just leave it like this. You could use double sided tape, but it's gonna pop off with time and from being open and closed and used up, which is why I'm gluing it as opposed to taping it. Now we're going to have this. Go on like this. I might have to cut this down. I think I cut the wrong end. <laughs> it's all right. Those things happen, you guys. Those things happen. Come on, it's like I did nothing over here. 
all right you guys so for this um i'm gonna have to do a voiceover for the rest of the video because some of the audio on the footage got corrupted luckily the video itself is not corrupted but the audio definitely got messed up so i'm gonna finish up adding up my little belts onto this now again you know th this is totally optional you guys this is just um an idea you know um a theme if you will but you can definitely choose to do it you know any way that you wish um so this is i guess part of the embellishing process now um i've added the belts um i'm gonna go ahead and um i'm trying to figure out exactly what it is that i want to do with this little strip at the end i'm going to actually use that strip um to create the little like the little holder for when i put the little belts through okay um that is just it's just an easier way of doing it um but you can definitely get fans here <laughs> if you want or if you have like a like a die or something like that that'll create um you know like the little uh buckle areas and stuff like that then you could definitely use that as well um I actually have to look for an image and put it in my Cricut so that I can go ahead and uh, cut print, you know, cut some of them out so that I have, uh, you know, shapes that'll fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this because I, I used the wrong side. So I'm gonna trim this, uh, the little ends of the belt. I'm not gonna put the hearts on these because this is gonna get tucked in anyway, so you really won't be able to see it that much. I really do like the aesthetic of the top. Um, now I'm gonna also, uh, I think I'm gonna be adding. Well, let's see. I'm trying to see what I'm doing here. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm cutting up. Uh, I'm separating them now. Now, you could definitely do this beforehand. Um, you know, you can definitely measure your strips, you know, to size. And if you're really good with measurements, then, you know, you can definitely do that and save yourself the hassle of doing this thing individually um, or doing it the way that I did it. Um, I just wanted to make sure that they all glued in the same spot so that's the reason why I did that because sometimes things can shift a little bit when you're you know kind of doing them individually so I'm trimming off any little bits to come out and um, making sure that everything is glued down and adhered uh, this is not all the way through and finished um, there is one more element that I think I'm going to be adding to this suitcase but I'm probably going to be sharing that with you guys on the next um, the next part of this video, which is going to be the little journal that I created um, and some envelopes that I created um, for this suitcase. Like they go with the whole um, theme of the suitcase with the papers and stuff like I showed you guys earlier. So just making sure that everything is nice and glued down. Um, at, f at first I was going to take the little um, pieces off but I decided to leave them on um, the other you know for the bottom half of the case I was going to remove the two little um, pieces um, that you see me kind of gluing down but I, I decided to actually fix it and leave it right did I leave it I'm looking on my suitcase yeah I left them <laughs> I left them um, this video is a little bit on the longer side you guys um, again it's really really hard for me uh, to cut out like details of the video so when I edit my videos I don't necessarily uh, you know do it like that so um, so just adding more distress so I'm gonna take two little tiny strips um, and I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it and measure it and see how tough you know how wide I need them to be and again this is gonna be where I'm gonna kind of tuck in the little belt at so what I'm going to do is just pretty much, uh, I'm going to cut my strip down to size, which is what you guys see me doing here. And then I, I'm folding, I'm going to end up folding the little ends so that I can kind of glue it down um, and have a little bit of room so that I'm not struggling to put it inside. If you glue it flush, then you might get a little bit of a struggle whenever you try to put the little buckle back inside. And I rounded the corners, but you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, as long as you clip off the little ends, like the little tips, then you're, you're good to go. Just so that they don't stick out over the, you know, once you fold it out. So now that I have kind of like the size that I want, um, it all works out pretty well for me. Now you guys know I eyeball things for the most part. Um, you know, measurement is not necessarily my strong suit. I get the job done, but <laughs> not, not based on mathematical equation, that's for sure. So, you know, make sure that if you guys want your stuff straight, you know, that you definitely use your rulers, you know, make sure that you gauge your, you know, the centers of your projects and so on and so forth, um, better than I did. 
So I'm kind of trying to decide like what do I want to put um, on the cover of these you know little tabs. So I have some scraps that I'm going to use but I actually um, also end up using some pearl, um, some flat back pearl trim that I got from Mona Migabi. It comes in a in a in a thick roll and it it's got like one, two, three, it's got like maybe ten uh ten per row. So um, you're gonna see me pull that trim out in a few minutes here. Now before I get to that, I'm gonna go ahead and gesso this box. Um, and this is clear gesso that I'm using just because I wasn't sure what else I was gonna do to it. Plus, you it's it's a good idea to protect that surface to protect that paper. Because this is going to be, you know, put in different places. Um, you just want to make sure that, you know, this is paper at the end of the day that you try to seal it somehow. So use some kind of a sealer um, or some kind of clear gesso or something to kind of coat the outside of your suitcase. Because that's the part that's going to be always exposed, you know, exposed to any possible accidents that can happen. So by gestoing the surface or sealing your surface then you'll at least be able to protect it as much as you possibly can and if it gets up getting wet or something spills or something it won't absorb it as much um, as it would if it was just regular okay um, it might give you a few seconds to kind of pull it out <laughs> and be like oh no um, so after I've done with this I've gesso just the outside. I didn't gesso the inside. I didn't need to. I didn't feel like I needed to gesso the inside. But it's up to you. You can gesso the inside and the outside. I um, mean, again, I used a clear gesso. This one is by Prima. Um, it's by the. It's by Finnebear. So definitely, definitely. Um, try to see if you can get yourself uh, a clear gesso. That's always good to have. Um, you know, for for covering up your surfaces uh, and still being able to see everything through it. Um. So let's see here yeah so here I'm gonna glue the little tabs in place and I use um as you guys can see I use the glue gun to do this because uh, the tension from the little tab being folded if you try to glue it you're gonna have to clip it down because it's gonna pop itself back up so I just kind of made sure that my little belt was able to feed through nicely as you guys can see this is the final part of actually building this thing um, you know as far as all the little elements that it needed for the things that I added to it um, the only other thing that I have to do is just um, pretty much the top area where I have the, the force the four belts in the top that's the only thing that I have to kind of do as far as the suitcase being complete um, as far as assembly is concerned not you know decorating or altering you know a lot of stuff so now I'm gonna try to figure out what I'm gonna put there and I end up finding this really really pretty um, kind of ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby it's got like um like a pinkish kind of uh metallic -y, uh pattern to it and the pattern that it's got is like stamps and postage and script uh and script if i'm correct let me look at it real quick yeah it's got like stamping um and postage it's got like a uh, script handwriting so i thought it was super cute um and definitely on the suitcase right because this is a traveler's thing so i thought the stamp the stampage was uh, a really nice touch for that so just kind of feeding the little uh, ribbon through this doesn't serve any purpose other than being aesthetically pleasing which is good enough for me and I like this I like the style now as you guys can see I'm a little bit off kilter here my my belt's just a little bit you know off just a little bit by a centimeter but it's okay and the grand scheme of things it doesn't really affect the appearance of things much sorry you guys but I'm clicking in and out of this voice over because there's always something going on around here and they're mowing the lawn outside <laughs> yes my luck my luck my luck so I think I'm gonna do the rest of um, the other part of this uh, process which is the little book I have everything already cut up and ready to go I think I'm gonna I actually started making the tutorial video for that but I think I'm actually gonna do that live um, so I'll try to link it in this video once I do uh, finish the live and I'll link the other parts to this as well so that you guys can kind of see it so now um you know obviously once you glue these papers down and these chipboards down there's going to be some kind of warping that's going to happen at least it, it, it is in my case maybe i'm a little too heavy-handed with the glue um but it kind of warps a little bit so you end up getting like these little these little tiny gaps these little spaces around the box around the perimeter of the box um and pretty much in order for me to cover that up because i don't really like how it looks um i just add a little bit of trim uh to all around the edge all around that on the one side you know on the top or on the bottom 
well basically on the top I think because the top will just kind of curtain itself down and cover the bottom so um, that's what you're gonna see me do and I'm just gonna do it around the two front sides I mean the two sides I didn't do the front or the back um, I left those gaps open because I'm still kind of figuring out if there's anything else I'm going to be adding to this. So, I, with me, things are always subject to change. Uh, you guys have seen me create something and then <laughs> two, a couple days later, I'm posting up a picture on my Instagram uh, sharing you, sharing with you guys what, what else I did to it because sometimes I just can't leave things alone. And I'm really in love with how this is looking. I hope you guys really like um, this whole process. I like making things like this um, I'm better at making I guess dimensional things um, you know larger scale uh, items it, it comes out a little bit easier for me so I'm gonna get ready to start embellishing you guys so I'm gonna use this little Fiskars flower punch um, and it's super cute it's like a little it looks almost like a little poinsettia it's like a little five star a little five uh, petals a flower okay, that's what it is a five point of flower um, and I'm doing them in both colors that I'm the the burgundyish uh, color that that red paper, as well as this cream uh, cardstock as well. It's like an ivory kind of color. Um, and I punched out a whole bunch of flowers because I didn't know how much I was going to be using. And originally I thought I was just going to scatter these everywhere and just glue them here and then glue them there. Um, but actually I ended up finding this um, chipboard that I had embossed. Oh my god! Like sometime last week. Um, when I was kind of playing around with the embossing powders and I had it there um, and I was like oh I think that that'll be perfect so I, I end up using that which I think looks really really cute but um it's hard to glue stuff onto embossed surfaces I didn't know that uh, something new that I just learned it's kind of hard to just glue things down they don't really stick down uh, onto that unless you're like using hot glue or something like that which I didn't do I should have done that, but the flowers are so tiny, I didn't want to burn myself, and I didn't want to fill up the whole top with glue, because I really dislike glue hairs. Um, <laughs> so, what you guys kind of see me doing is just kind of pushing in the centers, so that I give them a little bit of dimension, um, so that when they, once I spray them and they dry, they kind of dry with the, the little petals pointed up, even though some of them do get flattened out, um, I'm able to fix that a little bit later on. And I'm just going to kind of spray them down with different things, and kind of dab them down, and I'm using all different kinds of things. Um, that's uh, Tim Holtz Distress Ink Dauber uh, or Paint Dauber, whatever you call them. But it looks it's like ink is not um, it's not like paint. I think it's the Distress Ink or whatever. Um, and I spray that down. And what you guys see there, the little puffy, um, those two little bottles, the red and the white. Those are puffy paints. The white one comes from Dollar General and it costs one dollar. Um, so if you guys have a Dollar General around you and you're looking for really inexpensive puffy paint, um, get that. What I will tell you is, is that you're going to have to let it dry for quite some time. It does dry with a dimension that it's, you know, it does dry with a dimension. Um, but it's a, just a tiny bit looser than, you know, your higher grade uh, product would be. But it's still good enough and it does the job and it definitely does leave it with the dimension and everything like that. Um, just make sure that you, after it, you know, you don't put nothing on top of it once it's, you know, once in the drying process, number one. Number two, you want to make sure that it's thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly dry uh, before you start handling it or managing it because you can flatten them out and stuff like that. So I've done that because <laughs> I didn't know how long I had to let it dry for. Um, but yeah, definitely give it hours. Give it hours um, and it'll, it'll dry. Unless you're using a very small, tiny dot, then it'll dry faster. But if, you know, the more you use, then it's going to have to dry more. And I got a couple colors in that in that white bottle, um, in that puffy paint, and that's what it's called, puffy paint, um, in Dollar General, and they they have it in their either in their arts and crafts sections or in their kids section where they have the toys and stuff like that. So, check it out, one dollar, you guys can't go wrong, right? And I'm thinking that you could probably add other stuff to that. You could probably mix glitter and mix you know different things into that puffy paint, and then just yeah, <laughs> have some fun. So let's see alright so I put that to dry and now we're back everything is dry as you guys can see I put everything inside the little box and that's the little chipboard that I found that I was playing with before um, and I was like oh this will be perfect I also uh, punched out some butterflies I think that's the Martha Stewart butterfly punch that I used um, so this chipboard, I, I cut it out of um, using my Cricut machine. Like most of the chipboards that you guys are going to see me use are, are usually chipboards that I cut out. I don't buy these in the pack or nothing like that. I, I cut them out with my um, Cricut Explorer Air 2. 
Okay? So I trimmed up some of the extra foliage that was like a little bit excessive for the top of the box and I'm going to uh, place that large one on this on this hand. Um, <laughs> this is why I don't like doing this stuff you guys. Um, I'm placing the large one on one side and I'm placing the two little bits that were left over on the other side tucking it um, behind one of the little belts. And I used the black marker just to kind of darken up the edges a little bit so that it doesn't look so um, craft color even though the craft color would have been fine because of the aesthetic of the suitcase it kind of all matches and stuff so adding some glue I'm gonna glue this down um, and again I'm a novice so I didn't know that you couldn't really glue stuff down to embossing powder like that um, or maybe it's just this glue that didn't work too well with this embossing powder or maybe it was just this embossing powder that didn't work too well with the glue I don't know um, but it's really textured uh, the embossing powder is really really textured like you can definitely see all that texture on top of it um, and I did it in gold which I, I didn't mention that I did uh, the embossing in gold and I added a little bit of black to the top because at the end of the day I wasn't working I wasn't doing that for this I was just kind of playing around but it's okay because I ended up covering it with the flowers and stuff like that so it kind of ends up working out for me so I'm going to tuck those little bits here and there. And if you've watched the video to this point, like, kudos. Thank you so much. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Means the world to me that you've stuck around <laughs> and watched it thus far. Um, so, let me see. What am I doing here? <laughs> I know you guys must be like this girl is like the weirdest weirdest person when it comes to doing these types of voiceovers and stuff like that yeah I suck I know I'm trying to get better you guys I really really am it's just sometimes it's just not that easy I live by a train station I, I also live by the post office so the, they have a huge bell that goes off every half hour every hour um, and it goes off like it rings one time for every hour sometimes so you know once you start getting to those high numbers <laughs> it's like it feels like it's stuck on repeat so uh, any hoot so sometimes it's not easy for me to you know just kind of you know do the whole video through and again my projects take a long time because I, I try to pay attention to detail and I get inspired by so many different things that it's always evolving it's always changing um, I cannot just say oh I'm gonna do this and then just do that like no it, it starts off with the plan but the execution somehow goes left um, and I end up somewhere completely different and and, uh, and I'm happy you know the results I'm always happy with the results but you know <laughs> it's just tough it's just tough sometimes you guys um, if you follow me on Instagram that you probably saw some of the pictures um, for this because I did share right now it's really late at night so um, I'm getting a lot of shadow my desk is really really dark and you guys can see packs of soy sauce and ducks on my table oh my god that's so embarrassing but oh well I'm not I'm not editing this part I can't I couldn't take that out but anyway um, that's pretty much it for the embellishment to be honest with you guys I put the little flowers on um, I put the little butterflies on I didn't add anything else to it um, the only thing that I did do, and I probably did that off camera, is add the little, um, I added some little flat backs to, uh, the little holster where the little belts go through. Um, but I think this looks so super cute and super charming, like, I don't know what you guys think. Um, let me know, and I, I'm working on, uh, the little book, and like I said, I'm probably gonna go live to share that with you guys, so stay tuned for that. I might, today is Monday, it's Labor Day, happy Labor Day, um, for everybody that's, you know celebrating it in one way or another um, in remembrance you know of all of our veterans and stuff like that so I might go live later on today I'm not sure it's gonna be very random I have a lot of my pieces ready to go but we'll see we'll see I might just do it after I do this this uh, voiceover I'm trying to get back into the the, the swing of it all and I'm talking to you guys regularly as opposed to like instructionally for this part because this is embellishing you guys you guys can embellish your boxes however you know your suitcases however you wish um, this is just a little extra bit that I, I felt like recording and sharing with you guys um, you know just to kind of feed the imagination if you will 
But I really love it. I really love it. Oh my god, what do you guys think? <laughs> I really like these suitcases. I'm like so happy that I bumped into the videos. Like, I was like, what? Um, who was it? I think it was Scrap the World. I think it was Scrap the World that, um, that had like embellishment box um, and suitcases. I think it was her that I saw sharing a little suitcase. And I just thought it was the cutest, cutest little thing. Um, and I'm like, oh my god, you can do this in so many ways. Like, in so, so, so many ways. You can get super vintage. You can get, like, super shabby. You can go steampunk. You can go brunch. So many styles. Alright, so, um, the, what you're gonna see now, I think, is me adding the decorative little bits of paper. I don't know exactly what it is that I'm doing here. Oh, I know what I'm doing here. Um, so... For the inside of the suitcase, I'm going to be adding like this little tab. And this is like the final little bit of this video, you guys. I'm going to be adding this little tab so that when I close my suitcase, it kind of creates like a little pressure point um, in the front. And you're going to see me kind of glue this right in the front and I'm going to clip it in place. And now when I close my box, my box will stay like closed and it'll like seal a little bit better. So this is a really, really good tip, you guys. Um, because I did the other one before and I didn't do that. And even though it closes and opens well... I think it definitely could use um, of that little extra kind of like uh, pressure support in the front. So I glued it in the front and as you guys can see I'm kind of... So that's always an option for you guys. So thank you guys so 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 much for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed this process video. Uh, I will have some pictures here. And stay tuned for the next part of this video which is going to be me creating um, the little mini book or you know mini album lap book however you wish to call it. Um, that's going to be the continuation of this video. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.